Okay, our next task is to add private router functionality so that we protect, well, I'm going to caveat that word protect because we don't protect anything on the client side. What we're going to do though is sort of add curtains around our application to hide the main part of the application from our users. At the moment, what they can do, if they knew a link of one of our components, then they can be taken to our component even if they're not logged in. Now, what we do see is they don't get any of the data back from the API, and that's because we have security on our API. And what we're gonna do now is not a replacement for security on the API side, it's purely client-side window dressing to prevent a user from browsing directly to a root without being logged in. So when they try and access a link like this directly, then they'll just be sent back to the home page. And what we'll do to achieve that is we'll create another new component in the layout folder and we'll create a new file and we'll call it private root.tsx. And what we're effectively going to do here is extend the root that we get from React Router DOM. And before we enable the root or activate the root, we're just going to make sure that they're logged in. And if they're not logged in, then we're going to send them back to the home component. So what we'll do is we'll say export default function and we'll call it private root. And what we want here is to get our is logged in status from the user store. So we'll say user store equals use store. And we only need one property from this. So we'll destructure this and say is logged in. And what we also want to do is add an interface to this component. And we'll say interface. And we'll call it props, but we're going to extend. So we'll say extends and we'll say root props. As we're going to want to pass in the normal root props to the root that we're going to use. And what we also want to pass in here is the component as a property and we'll give it a type of react component type and then we'll pass in root component props of type any and we'll give it an alternative of just react dot component type of type any. And then what we'll do is we'll pass in our props to the parameter of our private root here. And we'll have the component and we'll call it component with a capital C and spell it correctly. And what we'll also do is use the spread operator and pass in the rest of the props. And we'll specify props as the type here. And what we're passing in here is the rest of the properties available inside props. And we'll be passing this to the root component that we use. So under the const, we'll add a return. And what we want to return here is a root that we get from React Router DOM. And inside here, what we'll do is we'll spread the root props by using the spread operator and the rest. And then we'll add the render function and we'll say props. And then we'll say is logged in and we'll use a ternary. And if they are logged in, we're going to pass them to the components and we'll take in the props using the spread operator. If they're not logged in, what we'll do is redirect them and we'll say to equals and we'll just send them back to the home page in this example. So if they attempt to access a route that is a private route, then they'll simply be redirected back to the home page. We won't give them an error or a toast, tell them they've been naughty or anything, we'll just simply send them back to the home page in this case. So what we'll do is we'll go across to our app.tsx and we'll swap our routes that we want to protect. And again, I use that word very loosely, protect, because we're not protecting anything on the client side. They download our application as JavaScript on the client. So therefore, we don't protect anything in JavaScript. We can only do that on the server side, just to emphasize that point. And what we're going to do is make certain routes inside here private. So we'll make the activity dashboard a private route. And we'll do the same for the activity details. And the same for the create activity. And the same for the profile page. Now the rest of these I'm not going to bother. In fact, we don't need a login form either. So we can remove the route for the login. We now have that inside a modal. And let's just clean up the login form from the imports. 
But the rest of these, I'm going to say that this is a training course, and I'm going to leave these open. Now, these error pages all have our navbar displayed, so if somebody does get taken to these, then they'll see the navbar with clickable links that when they click on it, will take them back to the home page. This is just an example of how we can do this, but yes, they will see or will be able to get to the test errors. And in fact, I will make this one private actually, but the server error and the not found, because this is a training app, I'm gonna leave this available because when we publish this, if we get a server exception, when we try and log in, then it would be useful to be redirected to the server error page. The not found page, well, you could do something with this to hide the navbar if you wanted to, but I'm not gonna go that far for this demonstration. We just wanna make sure these routes are protected. And what we can do is we can head back to our browser and we've been already redirected back to the home page. But if we try and access activities again, we simply get redirected back home and we can't progress any further. And of course that applies for any of the routes that we have in our application. And like I say, if they try and access something that doesn't exist, then they're going to get taken to this not found page. And if they click on return to activities, then they get taken back to the home page. So do what you want to do with this. But like I say, since it's a training course, I just wanted to demonstrate how we can kind of protect our routes. And do not think this is security for a moment, because like I say, they get all of our JavaScript downloaded to the client. And we've already seen what happens if they attempt to go to a page when not logged in and attempt to get our activities, it doesn't work. They're going to get un unauthorized. So those are the few finishing touches I just wanted to add to the application. The next part of what we do in this section is all about preparing our application and publishing it on the internet.